Hello and welcome to Monday Motivation. I am in the car again, but today I, I had a really good email this morning from somebody who's watched the free training. If you haven't watched the free training, you can get it at the link above. It says free training. Go and click there and that will take you straight to a link where you can put your name and your email address in and you'll be, you can start on the free training immediately. Anyway, so this person had, had watched that and she'd obviously taken on board the, the thing about give to the bit, but it's a really short email. I just want you to uh, listen to it and then I'll discuss her things. So she, was, she says she's thinking of anxiousness in the horse and would it be as simple as asking for give to the bit and therefore having their attention and listening to them? to you sorry um, my young cob gets distracted when we're out on rides and I do let her gaze at whatever has her attention for a few minutes then she'll come back down and listen and go forward um, very willingly um, when I have tried to prevent her from looking into the distance it's a bit of a struggle and I feel like a bully <laughs> so I don't know what to do now I try and keep her attention during the rides with asking for different things, moving across the lane or stopping at gateways and doing some turns on the forehand or quarters. She's very sweet and willing mostly. So I don't think she's anxious, just curious. So I love that. I love the fact that she is actually trying to engage the horse. So I think this happens a lot when we're, especially out trail riding, is we forget about the horse. You know, we're enjoying the scenery or we're chatting to a friend or something and the horse just sort of gets on with it. And and we forget that we're actually, you know, for the horse, it's, it's a learning lesson as well. So the horse is taking all sorts of things on board and we may not realize exactly what it's taking on board. I had a lovely person in the UK once who rang me up on a Sunday afternoon and she said, look, I'm at the end of my tether with this horse. It bucked me off again in the dressage test today. And every time I go into counter, it bucks me off. Um, and, you know, I had actually seen the person at the dressage competition because I noticed her lunging the horse before her test and she lunged it for about an hour and a half. I was like, oh my gosh, that horse is going to be really tired. And then promptly, as soon as she got in, it did buck her off. Anyway, she rang me and she said, either I'm sending it to the knackers or you can fix it for me. I said, okay, that's sort of emotional blackmail. But anyway, bring it round on Monday. So she did. And interestingly enough, a beautiful horse. All I did was teach it, give to the bed. So get into my bubble of communication, stay with me. And I asked her in the beginning to describe the horse to me. I said, what do you do with it? So I do a lot of trail riding. And I said, oh, that's great. You know, does a horse like that? She, oh, horse loves it. So looks at everything. You're such a sticky beak. You know, this horse, he likes to see what everybody else is doing. Look, the Joneses have got a new driveway. Oh, look, so and so's doing the gardening. And, you know, it's in England, so they do everybody rides around the streets in England. So it's quite normal. And, and I said, hmm, that's interesting. So you think the horse is interested in what your neighbours are doing? And she said, oh, yeah, he loves it, he loves it. And I said, what's his posture when he's doing this? Oh, his head's high and he drops along like this. He's having a great time. And I said, mm, maybe he's really scared. And she's like, oh, I don't know. I haven't thought of that. Okay. And I said, because there's a lot of indications. Right? His head's high. His feet are high. His tail's high. His um, activity is high. Everything is high. I think he's probably scared. She goes, oh, okay, maybe. So all we did was teach this horse give to the bit. And then suddenly... He's got something to respond to. So rather than having to notice the Jones's new drive or Mrs. Betsy's gardening or whatever else he's doing, he's responding to the rider. So if he sort of feels, oh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna look at this or this is gonna scare me in a minute, you can pick up a little bit of pressure on one rein and ask him to give to that pressure. He goes, oh, okay, now, now I'll talk to you. This is, this is easier, I can relax now. So the response we get from give to the bit is we pick up some pressure, the horse responds by relaxing, and then we release the pressure. And the horse goes, oh, so there's a release of pressure in relaxation. Okay, so I can't be relaxed and scared of the new driveway. So I'll just stay in your bubble and talk to you, and we'll go on like that. So every time the horse goes, oh, I'm a bit scared, so the horse's ears are like this, and the, the horse is happy trotting along the road like this, and then suddenly goes, oh, like this, and he looks up at something, and you go, oh, 
that just burst my bubble. And so you can bring him back with your give to the bit, as the writer of the email suggested. And it is that simple. You can bring him back with that simple exercise of pressure release and the horse will come back into your bubble of communication and then you can continue on much safer. One thing, and I know it is very common to allow your horse to look at the thing that's frightening it. And the, you know, that, that is one way of approaching these things and you know, it does work. It's just, it's not always terribly helpful. So if you're trotting down the center line and somebody opens an umbrella on the side of the dressage arena and your response to the horse being scared is to allow the horse to stand and look at something. That's great, except you have possibly just developed a pointer dog. You know, the ones that stand there like this and look at what's scary or what they're supposed to be doing. I'm not quite sure what pointer dogs do, but they point. And that's what you're, uh, what you're developing with a horse that will do that. So probably not something you really want to develop. I would much rather, because we know already that the thing that's making the horse stop and stare is um, engaging the horse. The horse can only think of one thing at a time. I really want that to be me. And um, so all I need to do then is, is teach it something like give to the bit where I can start asking it questions. If the horse is well beyond that level and still perhaps quite anxious when you're riding, like you might have only taught give to the bit and you might have just done that at home. So the first time you go out, you know, that might not be quite motivating enough to keep the horse there. So you could introduce some shoulder control. Start teaching it something. Movement will um, be more emotive than simply standing still. Probably the hardest thing to do with a horse is to get its attention when it's just standing still. If you move its feet, it gives it another thing to think about. So it has to think about where its feet are going, which is gonna stop it thinking about the scary thing that it was staring at. And the other thing our writer said was that she feels like a bully when she makes the horse do things. And that's, that's self-inflicted. That's something that you feel, but as a trainer or a rider, it's our job to engage the horse. It's our job to make it fun. So it is, it's like a partnership, isn't it? But the horse is the silent partner because we've had the good ideas. We wanted to go hacking around the country lanes. The horse didn't have that idea. So it's our job to make that fun for the horse. It's our job to convince the horse that it's a good idea. So it's like a partnership, but the horse has all the money. So we've got to convince the horse to part with its money, which is basically come along, be willing and have fun with us on our new adventure, whatever it might be. It might be show jumping, it might be eventing, it might be trail riding. But we have to convince the horse it's a good idea. So rather than thinking of yourself as a bully, why don't you think of yourself as the best teacher ever? Yeah? And make that your aim. So rather than think about bossing the horse around, think about engaging the horse with what you're doing. And that is a much better angle to come from and the horse will really appreciate that and it makes you much more animated it makes you much more fun it increases your energy because you're trying to think of something fun to have the horse do so when the horse sees the scary thing over there you go oh yeah that's only attractive who cares about that hey let's do shoulder control you know and if you approach it like that you'll find that you're training much better much faster and it's a much better experience for you and your horse now tomorrow we're going to go inside the training and I'll show you where to start with all of these things. Alright, I'll see you then. Bye.